Hello and welcome everybody to the weird world of knowing. We are back again with a wonderful guest, Helen Pritchard. Now, I have used Helen's LinkedIn wonderful free resources, but I haven't as yet gone any further and, and don't know a great deal about Helen, the person. So Helen has been nominated to come onto the show by Michelle Ewan, who, if you look back on the podcast, you will you will see a really beautiful episode where her intention setting is really quite extraordinary, is Michelle. So I'm really intrigued as to why she suggested that Helen comes on the show, because she said she's got some extremely weird and wonderful things that have happened to her about her intention setting. So Helen, tell us a little bit about you before we go any further. Oh, first, can we talk about Michelle? I just love her so much. She's like one of my best friends. I'm very lucky to have her in my life. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm Helen Pritchard, creator of the LinkedIn Mastermind. So I guess that's how you know me. Um, I do a lot of free five-day challenges for business owners who want to use LinkedIn to generate leads for their business. And what we do in there is we are we just take people from, you know just feeling really confused and overwhelmed and all of the advice out there, all the different things you could be doing, should be doing, might be doing in your businesses. And we make it really, really simple and we condense it down. So I think that's been my superpower over the last five years. This business has been, how can I take quite complex strategies, if you like, or quite quite complex concepts, but build them, boil them all down into something that makes it really easy for people to understand how to take next steps. So that's kind of who I am, what I do at the moment um, and how people know me why michelle's um nominated me to come on i'm not sure i'm like so i'm super spiritual i'm a, I'm a holistic therapist by trade i um i trained as a holistic therapist when my daughter was my second daughter was born so 2007 so i did all the traditional holistic therapy um stuff i specialized then in reflexology and i used to do reflexology and reiki for fertility specifically so that was kind of my niche hmm. i was into niching even then so that was the kind of my, my start in the world of business. So my first ever business was a holistic therapy business. And I've got a real, like, I think the reason why she probably thought it'd be good for me to come on is because I think I've got a really good balance between the spiritual mm. and the business, if that makes sense. So it's not just about manifesting and waiting for things to happen, but it is about using all the good stuff that the your intuition can bring, your energy. And I talk a lot about value, joy, profit. So not just about adding value and making money but actually getting joy in the work that you do and the people that you work with and I think that as a concept since I brought that to market five years ago value joy profit is the one thing that a lot of people do say makes a big difference when they go from right the spiritual me over here that's you know relying a lot on my, my intuition you know knows what feels good and what doesn't and then there's business me over here that's just doing all the things that don't feel right because I need to make money and I think trying to bring those two things together has been my kind of specialist thing really that a lot of people come to me because they're like I need to make more money but actually when they realize they can make more money in a way that's more aligned with who they are and the and I and I talk a lot about emotions based business and about how going on your gut feeling about making decisions about you know letting ideas come to you and acting on them rather than you know always trying to push 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 being more receptive and and in that kind of feminine energy so she probably thought it was those kind of things that you'd be interested in chatting about oh gosh well why would we not because you know so many energy therapists um watch this and listen to this as well as people who are interested in science and i know that is probably one area that most holistic therapists struggle with because we just basically want to get on and help and heal people and the business side like you said it really is it sort of holds you back in a way it it it, it holds you back from keeping in that flow but the practicalities like you say of actually having to survive and earn money and eat has to be done and we've got to be able to balance that out so we've got to do more than survive there Rachel this is it you know you can be extremely wealthy and extremely successful as a holistic therapist and people just don't seem to put those two things together you can be extremely successful and extremely wealthy and have a lot of money and have a lot of nice things and be a healer like you, those two things it's not just about 
this is a gift. I see a lot of this with therapists, like, well, this is a gift and I love it. So I can't charge. This helps people. So I can't charge for it. And it's like, well, think about Princess Diana's healer that's getting flown all around the world, you know, to go and to, to sit with her and work with her. And, and, you know, she will have been being paid hundreds of thousands of pounds for that. And it's like, and that is absolutely okay. You know, I think if there's one thing I want your listeners to take away is that you can be, be the absolute best or not even the best, you can just be the best at the thing that you do and find clients that really, really value that where you can make a huge difference and get paid way, way, way above market rates, whatever they may be. I see a lot of holistic therapists charging 30, 40, 50 pounds an hour um, because they don't feel like they can compete or they don't feel like that it's okay to charge more. But honestly, if you find the right audience and the right people who've got the problem that you can solve them. Yeah, you can charge a a lot more and should be charging a lot more for the amazing transformations that you're delivering for their clients. Like, so when I was a holistic therapist, you know, when I look back now, I was completely undercharging. I was, you know, charging 40 pounds an hour, but I was helping people have babies. (laughs) You know, people come into my house who are on like, you know, 150 grand a year. So with the husbands, you know, the Range Rover, all that, you know, all the trappings, I live in a really wealthy area. but they couldn't have a baby. I could fix that problem for them. I certainly help them fix that problem. Um, you know, I should have been charging so thousands of pounds, not hundreds of pounds. So it's definitely worth thinking about um, when it comes to pricing mindset and strategy, when it comes to healers and therapists, it's, it's okay to charge great money. It's okay to get paid all your off what you do. And it's okay to get paid for something that is a gift and was given to you by God. Yeah, it's okay. Absolutely. And it is that exchange, isn't it? It's that exchange of worthiness of, and, and I do believe that there is a, there's been a persecution, I think, of um, energy therapists, of holistic therapists for such a long time, whether people want to use the word witches or not. Mm, of course the mentality the emotions that go back and are still instilled in so many healers and practitioners therapists coaches of that belief system of not being enough and and it not being safe passion of just wanting to help and help the whole world Um, so how do you break that down let's 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 break this down a little bit for people then so how did you transition from from that into what you do now and was there anything weird knowings for you that took you on that journey um I think in terms of to going into like the business coaching side of things for me it was like I loved business I love my holistic therapy business I was the, I was the highest charging in my area I was a specialist I picked a niche people I had a big waiting list people you know would, would travel to me from a long way away because I was a specialist right and I think that and I positioned myself as that. I wasn't actually a specialist. I decided to become a specialist. I think that's quite important. Mm. I did an extra course, but you know, an extra two-day course, that was it, you know, on top of my original training. But that was the market that I went for, and, and that's stuck me out in front of all the other holistic therapists who did everything, right? You know, we do all of these things, and we do reflexology. I just did that one thing, even though I could do the other things, which is another great business lesson. Mm. I just chose one thing, right? Um, I, but what I, I loved about it was the... The, the impact that the business had on me. So I was kind of like, oh, suddenly I was working my own hours, I was earning decent money, I was, you know, around for my kids. And I was like, oh, this is a game changer for me. And um, when I saw how social media worked for, for, for the business, I was like, oh, this could help other therapists or the other business owners. So I started to teach it. And it was the teaching that really gave me the joy rather than the, being a practitioner because I could help more people. So the, the knowing for me was the more people I helped who were good people, you know, who were helping more people by proxy. Let's just use therapists as an example. I don't particularly niche into therapists, but let's say I help a holistic therapist, you know, get more clients and earn more money. Um, and that was better for me than me earning more money, getting more clients. What was it? What was more powerful for me was seeing the impact of the work that we were doing together that that I could help them and then they would help more people by that so the more that everyone that's in my world are good people that do do good work so I know the more I can help them get more clients and therefore buy more money uh, you know have more money the more people that they can help and the more people they help the more money they make but the more people they help the more people they have right so it's kind of like the ripple effect is is almost mind-blowing if you think about all the businesses that i've helped become better at business 
therefore get better at marketing, therefore reach more people and do more of their good work in the world and obviously make more money. And the more good people that have more money, the better the world's going to be ultimately. So when you think about that, and I would say that to any therapist listening, thinking, well, you know, I don't really want to put myself out there because people will say, yeah. and they will say, you know, you're charging hundred pounds for doing distance Reiki, like you're an absolute fraud, you know, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. you're charging, you know, you shouldn't charge this. You shouldn't charge to treat people with cancer. You're a disgrace. You know, you will get that. Right. And that is just part of it. And you're going to have to accept that because to get through those people, you need to get through those people so you can get to the people who really need your help. Yeah. Who really do need your support, who really do need you. And they won't find you if you keep yourself small. Mm. So for me, the real deep knowing was you're not here to be a therapist. You're here to help more people do more good in the world. And that's kind of why I moved into the, the coaching and particularly the group coaching, because if I can have 3000 people in a LinkedIn five day challenge, and they all get a better result and they all feel better about themselves and they all feel more confident and they have more clarity and they put themselves out there and get through all the mindset stuff that you do need to get through to get to go visible on somewhere like LinkedIn or anywhere, right? Because, you know, we are all witches and we are taught that the more visible we are, the more dangerous it is, right? But the more people I can help with that, if you think about, again, the ripple effect of that, it's like, I can do more in five days than I could do in five years of seeing people one to one because I can see people on that, yeah, I can help people on that scale. And I know that the more, the more clients people are getting, the more money people are making, the nicer they are to themselves, and the nicer they are to other people, the nicer they are to the people that they live with and the people that they interact with and the people that they buy from, the people that run the roads with. Like, I know that the, you know, the more money I can make people, which is, the, which is the symptom of the work, right? The more clients you have, the more money you have the happier they're going to be and the less road rage they'll be in the world because people are just generally nicer when they've got they're really confident and they're really calm and they're not stressed and they've got money coming in and they're charging their worth like the world is a better place you know what it, and I think you've arrived at exactly the right time for this podcast for the information to get out there and this feels very intentional for therapists to be honest and practitioners right now so this episode is going to be absolutely targeted at that niche because (laughs) the message that we need to get out to people to actually up their game and stand up now and be counted because there are so many people out there that need our help collectively and individually that it is time for us all to rise up and get past our own stuff get past our own beliefs and actually start making a real impact in huge numbers the world needs you it's a call to arms the world needs you absolutely COVID was a call to arms it's like everyone stop and everyone's going to need help and support the world needs them like everyone who's any kind of light worker and I might do it in business but I'm still a light worker I still help people with more than you know I don't see, talk about p I talk about the mindset and the belief system that you have to have to, to, to kind of adopt to do these things because I know the impact is going to have on their well-being ultimately that's the ultimate goal I might package it up and I'll help you make more money right and I, and and money's not a dirty word for me I love talking about money and the more money we can all have the better particularly women particularly like like working women who are going to do good in the world right so I say to people when they say oh but I don't feel comfortable posting on LinkedIn it's like well when LinkedIn's delivering you £10,000 a month in business right what are you going to do with that money because I know for a fact that you're going to do good stuff with that money you are going to invest into causes that you care about you're going to help people who need your help you're going to have a bigger impact in the world by having that wealth you know you're going to invest in ethical things like you're going to do the right thing and the same as if you build and scale and sell a business you know if you're a therapist and you're like oh do I really want to scale do I really want to grow do I want to bring people in and you'll start a practice or a center it's like think of all the other people you're going to be helping then and all the impact that's going to have and and then all the people that are going to be coming to the center so it's like it's okay to think big because the bigger you think the more people you help the more money you make the more good you'll do in the world because you are a good person mm-hmm. there's this whole you know, I haven't got time to unpick it all today, but there's this whole thing, isn't there, about, you know, it's somehow wrong to want money and it's somehow, like, it's unethical or, you know, money's the root of all evil and all that kind of stuff that we're kind of conditioned to. But it's also, like, it's it's not it's not for us. Like, I don't need money. I just want enough to get by. I just need to survive. I just need to make sure I can pay my bills. Well, 
do you not want more than that for yourself? Like, do you not want more than that for yourself and your family and your community? Because if you suddenly change your mindset and grow something into something really helping people at scale where you're doing more things whether you're just charging more whether you do you know you could potentially build and grow something that you could sell for millions of pounds and imagine the impact that would have on your family you know on your community and all the causes that you believe in so it's almost like why do we always feel like we just deserve enough to get by I just want to pay my bills you know it's a real I'm I'm going to answer that on behalf of so many people that I I I know and love and and I I know it's fear I know it's fear because therapists want to help people get past their own fears yeah fear that most practitioners coaches therapists have of actually being so visible (coughs) says she choking on her own words (laughs) so visible and there is even i you know i do i've had a blockage about this for years i used to work in tv right yeah i used to work in tv but i was behind the scenes and i'd help everybody else everybody else be visible and look after them and i love that and the only reason only reason i am doing this is because there is such a deep important message that we need to get out now that actually we have to stand up you know no one else is going to do this for us anymore and, if, no, and you've got to put your own this who else is going to do this if exactly. i don't do this with you who else is going to do this so this call to action is for each and every one of us to to get past our own shit basically and stand up there and be counted now it's uncomfortable for a while and we know what that's like we do know what that feels like but actually when we get to the other side of that it is so worth it and having coached thousands now thousands i mean we've we've sold like two and a half million pounds worth of the linkedin mastermind now there's a reason for that it's i'd love to think it's my sparkling personality it's not it's because it's because not only does the the work work as in do these things on linkedin it will work but it's the support isn't it it's the community it's the mindset because people are like yes helen this sounds really easy but i feel this kind of way about it so that's why we saw so much of the mastermind the self-study program not so much do you know what I mean? Like one, if you look at the graphs, which two and a half million are one and, you know, half a million are the other, like, because people are like, yeah, but you can give me all the tools, but if you're not going to help me and hold my hand through it, you know, I'm just not going to do it. And uh, the reason why is because of the, the way that we feel, right? And that's why it's so important for me to keep showing up and doing this kind of stuff to me to keep talking to people and holding holding events and holding space for people and it's interesting what you said about free so if I could wave a magic wand for all therapists I'm sure they would say if you cover all my costs I'll do this for free right as long as I can eat and the kids are okay I would do this for free right you can do that for free when you've built your business yeah and you've got predictable profitable recurring revenue business that you can say that is covering my costs and that pays my wages and and a bit and it's it's growing and it's in you know I can take money out of it if I need it and it's giving me all that kind of good stuff that comes with having a small business right then you can do free you can go to your local cancer uh, hospice and do free therapy you can go and help disadvantaged children you can go and help people at end of life you can go and help people who are having domestic violence or they're you know all the what or they've been bullied at school whatever your thing is right we all have a thing right mine's teenagers with anxiety because my children it's bullying because of my experience mental health because mine and my children right and you know various other things but like you can go and do all that for free i do the friday challenge for free but I, I wouldn't do that if I didn't have a business that was predictable and profitable. Does that make sense? Like yeah. the fact that I have that business allows me to do things for free. Whereas a lot of, it's the other way around. It's a lot of people say, well, I'm just going to do loads for free until people start paying me. It's like, no, go and get lots of people to pay you and then you can do stuff for free. So it's just a, it's a, it's a, just a different way of looking at it. But don't ever think that if you become, you know, suddenly, oh, I listen to this podcast and become this kind of like hard faced entrepreneur, which I am definitely not. But do you know what I mean? Like, if you think, right, I'm just going to be focused on value, joy, profit, I'm going to make sure I've got a really good offer. I'm really clear on the transformation I provide. I'm going to charge accordingly. But what about all the people I can't help? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's the, we're all safe. We've got a savior complex, right? We want to save the world. Yeah. Like, how can I charge, you know, 125 pound a month to be in my program when there's like a girl over there who's just left nursing, who's being beaten up by her husband who wants to start her own business, but she can't afford the 125 pound a month, right? 
I can't, I, I can only help her for free because I'm charging £125 to people who can afford it. It's like my whole business is built on the fact that people who are ready, willing, and able to, to invest in the businesses, they fund my time to go and help all the people behind them, just behind them that are coming up. And then we help them for free. And then they come up and they get the results and then they're able to come and invest in, you know, I've been going for five years. People have done a challenge, two, three, four challenges and then joined the program, right? And that's fine by me. I'm not, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm not desperate to get people to buy from me because, for example, I mean, this is just business math. It's not really about, you know, intuition or what we're supposed to be talking about. But, you know, we have a thousand people in the challenge, 3% buy, right? So if a thousand people in a challenge, 30 people will, will buy. So they'll start paying £125 a month. The rest of the people won't buy because they're not ready. And we go into the challenge knowing that because we've done, I don't know how many challenges we've done, 40 maybe over the years, but like a lot. Um, we know that it's just business maths. So again, we know if we invest X amount into Facebook ads and we get X amount of people in, X amount. But I never think I need more than the 3% to buy or I'm in any way upset that the 97% didn't because it's just business. But I, I actually love the fact that 97% of those people are going to get my help for free. Hmm. And I love the fact that those 3% of people are funding it for the rest of them. I just think it's a, it's a great model that, again, fits really well with my values and, and allows me to help people free. And that's there for everybody who, who wants it. You know, if you if you become a very highly skilled, highly paid therapist working with high-end clients who can easily afford you, and then, you know, then you can help all the people who, who can't afford you, but you can't start there. It's always hard to start there and kind of move up. And, and you know, there are going to be a lot of therapists and practitioners whose toes are going to be curling right now at the thought. Oh. Absolutely. And I just want to explain to you why that process is happening. is because as you are helping other people raise their, vi their vibration, your vibration is staying the same. And the reason that you are dealing with exactly the same people that that might be your niche and there's a reason that you are there and helping them and that might never ever change but your vibration is vibrating at a very similar level to theirs yeah despite the fact that you that the work that you're doing okay might elevate you higher you're coming back to a base level of that financial vibration being the same as theirs and until you choose and it is always a choice to mm -hmm. lift yourself higher up that scale of being worthy enough to actually not necessarily working on the finances it's all about self-worth this it's all about being visible until we put ourselves in a position like I put myself in a position of being visible of, of people having to hear the fact how uncomfortable I was when I first started doing this podcast and it was cringy and it's still not great, but I'm practicing every one that I do. I'm getting better. Mm, yeah. And, you know, it's it. Why not let the world see how I'm progressing? Because yeah. let people come with you. Yeah. You cool. know, what well, I can't. I'm not going to lie. You know, I remember seeing Gary Lineker do his very first sports interview for me. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what? It was cringy. I'm sorry, Gary. It was cringy. <laughs> it was cringy but you know what we were all willing him and we could see the mm. potential because of the knowledge that he's got and now you look at him and you think oh yeah but we've all got to go through this process of transition and it's uncomfortable but actually think about your own discomfort as you're sort of doing it and think whether it's going to be worth it or not in the long run I mean you've got I to get comfortable it's, 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 that's why Helen's here Helen's here to actually make you feel uncomfortable talk about the weird thing called money talk yeah. about a weird thing called business that we don't want to talk about and we don't want to do we've got to do it folks well you, the thing is I, I meet a lot of practitioners who are like I just want to be in my room in my therapy room and do my work so that's why I'm happy and I'm comfortable and that's fine but you're going to run out of money and you're not going to be able to do it anymore you have to go and get a job so it's kind of like there's your options do you want to thrive in this business or do you want it to just either stay at a really small non-growing level that just covers your costs so you just don't have to go back to get a job because you you know you, your parents or your partner are like when are you going to get a proper job mm -hmm. like you just want to be at that level where a client cancelling can like ruin your week financially 
Or do you want to be in a position where you're working when you want, you're charging what you want or you want what you're worth, and you have a really easy steady flow of clients where you become oversubscribed to use Daniel Priestley's word but like where basically you have a waiting list of people who really want to work with you because you're the one for them and you do that by position positioning yourself with your marketing as the solution to this specific problem uh, and you know on a practical level becoming a specialist not a generalist is always the first step you can always charge more as a specialist rather than a generalist and and position yourself in front of clients who've got money. This sounds really basic, but again, like you said about the vibration, a lot of therapists who aren't in a lot of money end up attracting clients who have a lot of money because you're kind of in that in that zone. I did this for a long time. Um, you know, a lot of my language around, are you feeling stuck in your business? Are you struggling to get leads? And it's kind of like, I attracted a lot of people who were stuck in their businesses and struggling to get leads. Now I can help them, but it's, it's harder because I've got to get the money out of them, you know, ultimately to make it into a business. So... Now we changed a lot of the language and, and people know that they come to me and they can go to that next step wherever they're at in the business. So we still do help a lot of people who are stuck and struggling, but it's not the only type of people we attract. So on a practical level, you know, being really clear in what you're, you know, where you're at. And, and, and the thing that I didn't realize that my language had changed, like I changed and the business had changed and, you know, my income had changed and, you know, my experience had changed, but I kind of kept the language the same because, I hadn't had that mindset leap myself, you know, so I, you know, it took somebody else pointing it out to me. So if any of this sounds like obvious and you're like, oh, why do I think of it? It's the same for all of us. You don't see it when you're so close to your business. You you just don't see it at all. And, and the thing is as well, you're quite often surrounded by people who don't get it, who don't understand. (laughs) You don't even get what you're doing, never mind what you should be doing in a business or charging. And, and it's having that again, why the mastermind is so, so successful is because being around people who get it, who understand, who are like, I'm going to put my prices up and I'm really nervous and this, that, and that. I'm going to do a video and I'm going to talk about, and we get it because we've all done it in our businesses. So we can cheer you on. And then when you come back and like nothing happened, people just paid the new rate. And it's kind of disappointing, you know, it's all happening in here. Like it's in your heart and it's in your mind, but it's not really in the, in the world. You know, a lot of it is, you know, worrying about things that never happen. But what I would say is like, I have exactly the same thoughts and feelings and fears, you know, and I, I charge, you know, £10,000 a month for somebody to work with me um, on a consultancy level. And, you know, when I say that out loud, I always expect them to just start laughing or like fall off the chair. Or one guy did say to me, he went, wow, that's a lot. You're very expensive. And I just went, "Mm -hmm." and he went, you must be really good. I was like, yeah, I am. You know, so it's, it's, other people's finances are none of my business, right? He can't afford to work with me, then that's a shame. But, you know, I couldn't afford a Rolex to bought one either, you know? Like you've got to position yourself as aspirational. People should want to work with you. You should have, most people should be able to afford you and then you're going to, you've got your pricing right. Like you should be for the top 20%. And then what you'll find is that when you do that and you become this kind of, yeah, it's, you become the, the premium offer instead of being the, think about it, I don't know. I remember when Groupon came out and I was working in a, a therapy room years and years ago and the woman who owned it um, did it and I was sort of freelancing for it. We ended up doing full body massage for like eight quid, back to back to back. And we were stacked out though because of these yeah. uh, you know, bargain hunters who never came back, who never wanted to use us again, but they just wanted a, a 20 quid massage or whatever. Like, and, it, and I ended up getting paid eight quid of it. And uh, you know, it's just, it's not a, it's not a good business model. You want to be well, it's working smarter, isn't it? It's working smarter with yeah. your own energy. You don't start want to be the cheapest. Smarter. Start using every single skill that you have for yourself and for your niche so that you can reach more people and be more effective because the time is now coming. It has arrived. It's here. It's absolutely here. And if that means grouping together, to become a community of therapists and practitioners so that you can afford to do these things. Do it. Like the, the people I see really stuck and really struggling um, are people who are like, don't want to invest in their business and then can't stand why other people won't invest in them. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as like a sort of, you know, wanky sales tactic. What I'm saying is like, it's a mindset, right? It's kind of like, I'm, if I'm scared of spending any of my money, then other, I'm going to attract people who are scared of spending money. You know, if I'm if I'm scared to 
treat myself to something nice then I'm going to attract people who are scared to treat themselves to something nice you know if I if I don't feel like I'm worthy of you know it's like silly things like you know like herbal tea you know I remember some reading somewhere someone said I just realized one day that I deserve a fresh bag every time I have a cup of peppermint tea and I was like oh yes I do deserve you know when you just think oh I'll just put some more hot water on that it's a bit lukewarm and a bit a bit weak and then you're like no, I deserve a fresh cup of peppermint tea. Like, it's just those little micro mindset shifts, isn't it? Of like being a good tipper, you know, being, you know, just being generous with your, with your money and your time and your attention. And then other people, they sense that vibration and they, they feel like, you know, when you're in that lack mentality, it kind of, it does emit on that vibration for mm-hmm. sure. And it's, I know it's difficult when things are difficult, but like I said about the tea bags, there's always little upgrades you can do do you mean like throw away your knickers with the holes in and just get yourself a decent pair of you know i mean a decent set so if anyone's wondering why helen's on this is to absolutely ramp up the energy of making money Mm, lovely money normal for therapists for practitioners for coaches for those of you who've been giving year in year out and you are financially struggling yourselves Mm -hmm. because you have not believed that you are worthy you are worthy everything that you have been giving to everybody else for so long you are just as worthy and it doesn't mean as Helen has been saying that you still can't give for free because if you've been doing that your whole life you're going to do it anyway Mm -hmm. make some organized masculine energy time now Mask, it's time for you to masculine energy time to make sure that we have enough energy for us to change the world in a financial way so that we can really be present, really be present. And we do need some finances behind us for us to be able to make those changes in the world we want to see. We're nurturers, we're nurturers by nature. So we need the more money we have, the more nurturing we can do and in the right areas like otherwise we leave all the money to the men the you know to the leave all the money to the men and the power and all that kind of stuff like i'm not a mad feminist but it's kind of like women do better things with money right we, we understand we're more nurturing we understand the bigger picture and just about bigger picture when you when we talk about marketing so if you look me up you'll be like oh helen's big into like linkedin and, and marketing and and putting yourself out there and visibility and doing lives and all the videos and stuff and um, it's the more visible you are the more people you help that's what you need to get into your head it's like you can't help people sitting in your room Mm. thinking about helping more people that's not how the universe works you can't just manifest clients you can't just expect to get it all through word of mouth you don't want to run a business through word of mouth you want to be people to coming to you all the time wanting what you can give them what you can give them i want to think about the bigger picture of that as well because you know, when I have things like reflexology, when I have bone therapy, when I have massages and whatever else I'm having, I have anything, you know, like, I love it. And this is another thing, like, and I've got them, I've got the money to invest. So when my bone therapy is like, it's 50 quid now, I'm like, I'm trying to get to charge more, but I'm like, right, it's 500 quid for the next 10 sessions, because I don't want to have to keep faffing around with the payment, you know, there's loads of clients out there like me, who want the result, we don't, we don't care about the, the money, you, you know, it's almost like, why would I go to the cheapest therapist or to an everyday therapist when I could go to a specialist who's like really good at what they do? Because if I have regular bowing, I walk, talk, think and feel differently. So if I walk, talk, think and feel differently, I in a better way. So if I feel better, basically, I'm a be- better partner. So I have a better relationship with my partner because I feel better and I walk better and I talk better and I'm just a nicer person. You know, I'm nicer to my kids because they're teenagers and they don't always, you know, they quite often push me to my limits. But the more Bowen and reflexology I have, the nicer I am, the more patient I am, the more able I am to deal with them. And it makes me a better boss. So team meetings and, you know, it makes me a better mentor. So my clients uh, that I work with, it makes me a better holder of space. So I'm holding space for thousands of people, a lot of them women, a lot of them coaches, consultants, therapists. Um, makes me a better person with that. It makes me show up differently. It makes me nicer to the person I buy my cup of tea off. It makes me nicer when I let, I let more people out when I'm driving, so I'm feeling more chilled. I'm nicer to people on receptions. I'm nicer to my dentist. I've been to the dentist today. <laughs> and we have a great relationship. And she's always like, you're always so chilled, Helen. I don't really like needles. So today I was like, oh, I'm a bit nervous. And she's like, I can't believe you get nervous. You're always so chilled. 
And I'm always so chill because I'm always having therapy. <laughs> that's why. And that's the difference it makes. So, and it means I make more money. So I'm happy to invest in my well-being because my well-being is important. My relationship is important. My, my business is important. And it all starts with well-being. There's never been, honestly, there's never been a better time to be a therapist, uh, you know, because it's, it's the top of the agenda. Everyone needs you. Everyone's talking about you. Companies need you. You know, and we'll invest heavily in it because you're solving a massive multi-million pound problem for them. So, you know, please, honestly, please don't undercharge. It's not fair on yourself. It's not fair for your clients. And it's not fair for your other fellow therapists. You're just doing each other a disservice by keeping the prices low, making it a race to the bottom. And, you know, just somebody somewhere out there will always undercut you because there'll always be therapists working for free always through them all of millennia there's been therapists and healers working for free so don't ever think people can't get help if you if you start charging properly because yeah. there'll always be someone willing to help them yeah. right so of course you're fantastic at what you do like it's a combination of those two things right so people want the transformation that you can provide and they will pay for it when my daughter came out of school and she was loads of things happened to her, a lot of trauma and she was suicidal I did not want to wait for cams. I, I gave a therapist £3,000 the very next day for us to start working with my daughter. People are very motivated. People have lots of money. Get it out of your head that people haven't got money. I'm a single mom. Well, I was a single mom. And people used to say to me when I would coach them, like, single moms haven't got any money. I'd be like, it's so rude yeah. and assumptive. Like, I'm a single mom. I have plenty of money, you know, and I've got problems I want to fix. And I want to fix them. I haven't got a lot of time, and I want to fix them, and I want to fix them in a, a natural way, right? So how can you help me and and how, what is that impact going to be having on me and I'm not saying like you should always just charge a premium and that's the answer because it's not always the answer you know to me I'm not saying everyone should suddenly charge a thousand pound at all but I think when you become a specialist not a generalist you really know your audience and you're really good at getting a result whatever that result is and people 100% will pay and will invest in that and I think when you're trying to it's just taking it put it on the client side not your side which is oh, well, I'm just a therapist, so I just charge 50 quid an hour or whatever. You know, it's not about the hours. It's not about the time. You know, yourself, any any kind of energy work, it's nothing to do with the hour. I used to do Reiki. And, uh, you know, it's done in the first five minutes. The, the other 55 minutes, he's just standing around, really, isn't it, for sure? Yeah. You know, I'm so glad you said that, you know. Yeah. Energy at work is changing in such a phenomenal rate that this old premise of you know i need to go and sit on a bed and lie in a bed for an hour to be pampered that's purely for the client's benefit it, it is it's really sure. not for the therapists or the practitioners or the coaches who know and is highly skilled in what they are doing literally we are seeing people and dealing with your needs and wants faster and faster and faster and i know that's weird i know that's weird if you're not even in this business to even comprehend because you're listening to the news and you're seeing what's happening in the nhs mm -hmm. and you're looking at the mainstream picture but you come away from that and you come away to people like myself and and other therapists we are helping people i don't retain clients yeah, they, they, literally, they come in and they go out my door, and that's it. They're off. They've forgotten about me. They've moved on. They're so happy with their life. They've forgotten about their issues. They don't want to think about it. That yeah. are new things, and that's exactly how it should be. I should be an interim stop, mm -hmm. make you feel safe to help you get through that, and then boom, off you go and crack on with the rest of your life and pop in occasionally and we'll have another clear out to make sure you can keep doing that regularly and yeah exactly sure. what's happening now in the energy field of energy therapists and coaches well we're in the quantum field anyway so like you say the whole notion of right let's do an hour session is is silly right it's the intention it's already done you know it's kind of like things are happening at the speed, the speed of light and stuff that we can't even comprehend right so it's almost silly but it's almost the act of somebody investing is normally enough to, to make the work happen, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's about looking at it a different, a different way, I think. But I think that, that you've got to get, we're talking about knowing around this podcast and like, I think you've got to, to really tune in and I know a lot of you'll be able to do this, really tune in and like, is this a fear of being visible or is it like a real fear that I can't do this? Because if it's a fear of being visible, that's perfectly normal. 
And I feel the same. So when I'm coming on a podcast, when I'm doing a live, when I'm starting a challenge, when I do a launch and I ask people to buy or I ask people to invest in my consultancy or my one-to-one or join a program, like I expect everyone to say no, right? I feel exactly the same. And I, I feel like I don't like the way I look, the way I sound, the way I speak. I don't like any of that. And I do get people telling me, you know, you, you know, you're a fraud, you're a liar, you're a con artist, you're a snake oil salesman, you know, you're this, you're that, you're, you know, you're too northern, you swear too much, you drink too much wine, you, you know, you move around too much when you talk too fast. And I get all that. So it's normal. And I think it's not just you, like, it's sad news, like, you're not that special. Everyone feels like that. The only difference is that successful people do the things they've got to do anyway. They don't let it stop them, you know, and you just do the things. And over time, confidence comes with evidence you know so when people say oh you're a fraud and a liar I used to feel awful and try and really overcompensate trying to prove that I wasn't now with my success if you like you know no one can take that away from me you know over two million pounds worth of something sold people don't really call me a fraud anymore Mm. because they've seen the evidence I've been around for five years it wasn't a get rich quick you know sell a you know sell a magic pill type you know get you know give a never see me again thing but that's what it looked like when I first came out and that's fine you know people thought that and it didn't wasn't fine at the time but just carried on doing the things anyway you know you got to have mission over mindset in the moment you are going to have loads of moments in your business where you feel like you don't want to do something or you can't do something or something's really hard for you because or it's really easy for Helen because you know we do that sometimes you go what are your statements you know think about what are your statements because it's easy for Helen because what's that statement like? Because you might look at me and be like, well, it's easy for you because you know you've got an audience or you've got this or you've got that, you know. And and it's hard for me because and it's like, well, it's hard for me because I've got six kids or because my mum's died or because this or because that, right? And actually write those statements down and, and bring them into the light and think, is it harder for me really? And is it really easier for Helen or anyone else who's successful in in whatever field, right? Is it really? Is that the truth or is that just your human brain just trying to keep you safe and keeping you small and keeping you like secure because that's what it's designed to do and I think having a real clear focused marketing plan which isn't very woo-woo but having a strategy and having a plan and executing it no matter how you feel is really the key to success it really is you know what Helen I can't thank you enough for being here today because I feel like I've had a private coaching session (laughs) Yes, Rachel, you can that's do all this thing. But that's the beauty, isn't it, of putting yourself out there in doing yeah. something that I was deeply uncomfortable with when I started doing a podcast. And now I'm reaping the benefit of mm. having time with people like yourself to come on. And when I need that conversation, beautifully, yes. today, you've just <laughs> exactly when I needed to hear this. And I know that when people tune in it's going to be exactly the right time for them to hear this as well yeah. because or not some people yeah if you're listening to this and you're feeling really triggered and really resistant and hostile to the point where you're like I really don't like this woman that is okay too a lot of people do have that reaction and it's just people not quite ready yet and that's fine but what happens is over time you're like oh yeah this is actually it's just not the right time for you to hear it, but that's okay. I don't take it personally. Um, but yeah, when you're ready, like you're saying, Rachel, when you're when you're ready, this stuff lands. And that is the reason why I do so much live content on my free challenges. Somebody somewhere always gets something out of it, which all which is why you know I've been at the dentist today. I was like, should really cancel that podcast. Don't even be able to speak. I'm only gonna have like 20 minutes of my dinner. Blah blah blah. So, was, so in my head, I was like, I could cancel this podcast because part of me is like, oh, I've got to go and talk and be visible and I don't know what it's going to be like and I don't know what I'm going to say and you know I don't prep for these things but now you know I'm like oh this is brilliant this is the best thing I've done all day but I've done other things up in the dentist don't worry do you know what I mean like I'm really glad I'm here I really hope because because I'm a holistic therapist by trade I really hope that people get something out of this and they really do the work because it matters the work that you're all doing it matters so much and I can't I can't do it now as a as a service because I'm called to do bigger things, which is to help more people do more big things, right? And because that and that's the way I can help you all do more of the service, right? So it's kind of like, oh yeah, this is why we did this podcast today, right? And I think it's and I think you've hit the nail on the head. You're doing what you're doing because you are comfortable in what you've been doing. You might have been doing it for a very long time. Mm. The picture now is much bigger. 
the world has literally impl is imploding and we are being called to stand up and move forward and that means being bigger versions of ourselves that means yeah. taking on in a way more responsibility out of our comfort zone and we can respect the work that we are doing and the time that we are doing mm -hmm. for an energy exchange that is worthy of that and you are worthy of that you absolutely are we're struggling yeah. with anything and i know that vibration when we hear something and it could be a really you know high-pitched song or whatever that's that's really happy and it irritates the hell out of us you know sometimes when you're feeling when you're just split up with someone and you yeah. want to put on those sad songs because yeah. that's where you're feeling you can't listen to that great music that you want to bounce around to because you need to just soak in for a little while those sad songs well it's time for us to okay have a sad have one sad song and then we've got to start lifting ourselves up a little bit more and let's start the party then you can start to you know resonate totally with what helen is saying and and take those pieces that you need to move forward. And if you're struggling, come and see me and we'll do it together. Yeah, I mean, and come back to this as well. If you are listening and like, oh, I'm feeling all the feelings, like this isn't going anywhere. So you can come back to this in a week, in a couple of days, six months, a year. I know a lot of people watch my stuff again and again and like it lands differently every time. I think same with books, right? But what I would say, what I would like to leave you on, like if there is somebody in your life right now who doesn't believe in you, and doesn't believe in the work that you're doing and doesn't believe that you can make it a success it's all right now because you've got me i 100 percent believe in you and you rachel to build a business that gives you a life beyond your wildest dreams that helps more people than you could ever imagine and does more good in the world and creates more wealth for you like i 100 percent believe it and i believe it because i've done it for myself i've coached thousands of people to do it for themselves as well so it's just time to take action now music to my ears and i'm hoping it's music to a lot of your ears but like helen says we really get it if if that's um ringing literally just ringing in your ears right now but just come and talk to us come and talk to us outside of this and see what what steps can be put in place to to, to make those baby steps along the way because you can do this you are needed and we'd love to do this side by side with you. So, Helen, what? What a woman! What a woman! <laughs> we needed you today. I needed you today. So, I wow. can't thank you enough. Um, I think you've probably answered already the questions that I would sort of normally <laughs> ask. So, I'm not even going to add anything else into this. But is there anything else that you want to just add before we go? Yes, there is actually. Because I was just thinking about. Well, first of all, I'd love to come back and talk about LinkedIn specifically for Ooh. therapists and coaches. That'd be really cool, actually, if we could do that. Fantastic. But what I was going to say was, like, please do come and look at my stuff. So we're creating a, you know, the five-day challenge, which is quite famous now. It's happened loads of times. We're actually making it into a mini course for, like, 50 quid, where you can just do it any time. So I'd love for any coach and therapist to do that, because what it does, it takes you step by step. We've got loads of free resources as well. I've got free webinars and stuff like that. So if you need anything like that completely free, you can't invest at all then just let me know. We'll send you everything you need. But this is really, gr it's really great for me to have this to sort of give to people at that level because they can just go through the whole five-day challenge experience, if that makes sense, without having to wait for the next one. Because I need to, again, I need to scale. I'm like, I'm scaling two businesses at once and I need to get, give as many people as many opportunities. But I do believe as well that LinkedIn is the place for you. Mm. Coaches, therapists, yeah. coaches, work healers i really do do not be scared of linkedin and i'm happy to well up i've up been there. i've been scared of linkedin i yeah. have and i know it's the place that i need to That's be up, but and it's funny because my chest will immediately go as soon as i go into fear <laughs> and as soon as i i can hear it and feel it here so yeah but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to start using LinkedIn as, as my number one go-to tool, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's so good for local stuff as well. Really, really good for local local audiences, building a local footfall. It's like second to none. It's the only place in the world where you can search people by job titles and areas. So you could just build a whole, whole 30,000 people who are wealthy people who live in your hometown. Like, it's incredible. And then you become the go-to person for your thing. Mm. 
and then you put out loads of great content and you anyway I, i'll talk about it more if i come back or and then you are well please please come back <laughs> about that we I, I i certainly want you back and i'm sure the viewers listeners will as well so thank you so much really important oh, thank conversation you. today very important yeah. conversation um we'll see you all next time thank you very much thank you very much rachel and thanks everyone bye bye